It's like the size of my thumb. What's up? Today we are reviewing the brand new Insta360 Go 2. Now for those of you I think that have never even heard of the Insta360 Go or seen these cameras, I am an average Caucasian 183 centimeted white male. This is my thumb. It's nothing extraordinary long. This is the camera. <laughs> Before I dive into details of the things I enjoy and things I don't enjoy about this camera, this camera is so fun to create mobile first social media content. And that, in a nutshell, is who I think this, this camera best speaks to. What's up guys, my name is Jake Rich. I'm a travel filmmaker and content creator. And if you haven't already checked out this video up here, or it's up here on the cards, my beautiful partner and I, Anna, were super fortunate to be able to create a showcase piece with the brand new Insta360 Go 2. We created a little travel film in Tulum because that's where all, because it was fun. And that's where we could get to as travel content creators in 2020. I'd love for you to see sort of what we got up to and what this camera is capable of. Cause I think that really does showcase exactly what the go-to is capable of. But today in this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions, thoughts and feelings about working with probably the world's smallest action camera. Having a quick sticky peek at what's in the box. First up is some sort of magnet hidden amongst complex folds of cardboard that I'm clearly unable to open with ease. Be warned. Ah, uh, yes, I remember my first unboxing. Ooh, I love a good unboxing. With a clean and satisfying rip of a sticker, the camera connects to the pendant, a magnetic pendant, and we're on to the next item. More cardboard and presumably instructions. We'll leave those for you to munch on yourself. Let's have a look at this big fat white box. Okay, it's matte textured. Mmm, smooth in the hand. Has a USB-C input and a three mil screw mount. Next up, a magnetic hat clip. Pretty handy for all kinds of POV. Back to the box though. Letting the camera slide on in, mm, fits like a glove. Tapping through the menu, we've got video mode, photo mode, pro video mode, time shift, time lapse, HDR video mode, slow mo, a settings option, and we're back to the beginning. Last couple of gadgets, looks like your standard USB-C charger cable. Yeah, and finally another mount, which probably could be used as a selfie stick. It seems to have a ball and socket joint and an adhesive section. Mm, and for size comparison, here's the Insta360 Go 2 up next to the latest GoPro Hero 9 Black. Hmm, quite small. Oh, there's one other mount that isn't part of the box that we were using when we were creating our showcase. And that's this little, it's like a little housing for it. So you can connect it to a selfie stick. You can connect it to GoPro mounts. It's like your traditional action camera mount. You could use a whole heap of other accessories like we did. I use this to create a bite mount. I use this to create the selfie stick, loads of stuff. It's something that you can get through Insta360's website. On the box, Insta360 label this as a multi-use charge case, having three purposes. One being storage, two being a remote, and three being a tripod. Totally get the tripod element. That's pretty basic, it's pretty simple. You can see that the camera just sits up on the top there. We haven't yet been able to use it as a remote, basically, if we wanted to fire or trigger anything from the camera outside of the charge case. Like this, we would just use the, the phone through the app. I was using a, an earlier beta version when we first created our showcase. So maybe that's something that is now possible. This button here activates record and there's four commands. So you can hit it once, you can double tap twice, you can long hold once and you can long hold twice. So there's four commands, which means you can program in four presets. I have programmed this to just always shoot pro video because that is hands down my favorite feature of this camera. And I'm gonna talk about that more later in the video. And quickly touching on my least favorite feature and that's anything other than mobile workflow. So top three things that I absolutely love about this camera. Number one is the form factor. You can't deny that having a camera the size of your thumb is cool. It can literally go everywhere with you. And obviously how well this actual lens responds to the range of conditions that we put it through. The third part that I absolutely love about this camera is its stability. It's so stable for something so small. You would think like, oh, a camera that size, 
course it's gonna be shaky footage. It's not shaky one bit. It is super, super stable. You do not need a gimbal. You can literally just go out and create fun social media content. And the final thing which I like about this camera is ProRes video. It gives you this option to shoot in one mode, which you can then, you know, after the fact, when you come to edit on the Insta360 app, gives you a slew of options. For example, here's a little clip that Anna and I created for an Instagram story. But the coolest part is that it doesn't just have to be in the nine by 16 aspect ratio. It can be in one one or 16 nine. Let's say you wanna go out and just create a little bit of social media content. You wanna mobile first edit something. You wanna go out and create a little vlog of your day which is something that I just did earlier today. I just pretty much shot in pro video, then edited everything on my phone and exported that content in nine by uh, 16, so in vertical. The coolest part about that is that the video is not just in vertical. If I wanna export that video for a travel film or use that content for any other purpose, I can just whack the go to onto my computer, import those ProRes files, and I've got nine, I've got 16 by nine frames. Onto the not so fun stuff. The stuff that maybe makes this camera less desirable for certain creators. For those of you that are not looking to be mobile first, if you're looking to use more professional gear to edit and post produce content on your desktop, the user experience of a product like this is not as desirable. And the, the reason why I say that is because in comparison to other user experiences of action cameras, you have an SD card. You can pull the SD card out, you can just whack it into your computer and away you go. That is something that I found more challenging with this product. Any tech first device that solely requires Wi-Fi, I always have a little bit of a qualm with, especially in the action cam world. And I say this because it definitely makes you think twice about you know, using the camera for rugged action purposes. Let's say you're FPV droning and you crash your FPV drone and you smash the camera. How do you intend to get the footage off the little action camera? There's no SD card that you can detach. I guess I have a workflow that's not mobile friendly. I started to question whether I would do as rugged or as crazy or reckless things with this because I can't access the SD card. There's only 30 or 28 gigs of internal memory. So for those of you that go out and create, you know, like loads and loads of vlogging content, this camera probably isn't gonna suit you. And I say that because like, some days I'll go out and shoot 50 gigs of content on an action camera. And then if I filled up that SD card, I can put on another SD card. So a huge limitation to this device is the fact that you only have a set amount of storage. And that set amount of storage is only accessible through Wi-Fi or you know, if you plug in the USB-C and connect it to your laptop. Another thing which isn't quite practical is the fact that the camera only has this one button. Let's say you're going out to shoot something in the water. Obviously you're not taking the charge case. That can be a little bit of like, I don't know, like a new language because sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll say, okay, I wanna go shoot a time-lapse and you click the button and you think it's shooting a time-lapse and it's just shooting standard video. Because there's no screen, you know, like there's no actual, that's just a pain point in itself, especially if you've worked with a camera where you know exactly what you're setting up. The area that I found a little bit frustrating was the fact that you, I just couldn't review the footage from the device. You know, like we don't always have our mobile phone on us. And you know, even if you're framing up a shot, you don't really know what you're capturing. Yes, shooting in pro video was awesome because it captured everything. So, you know, I could reframe, resize and post, but it would just be nice if you could just see the content without having to connect it to your mobile phone. You you know, you look at the other action cameras and they've come from not having these, these screens, LED screens, um, to having them now. And there's a really good purpose for them. Like even having a front facing screen on the newer action cameras, they're super valuable just for framing up and making sure that you nail your content. So there's lots of pros, there's lots of cons to this camera, but where I think it sits best is for someone that's just looking to go out and create some really fun mobile first content. For anyone that's looking to create higher resolution content, four or 5K shots, maybe those features do really impact the way that you work with the product. So, Insta360 have created a rad little mobile friendly Insta360 Go 2. I think it's a cool upgrade from the Insta360 Go. Hope this video has given you some insight and understanding as to whether this is the camera for you. If you have enjoyed the video, punch the thumbs up button, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're new around here, and we'll see you guys in the next upload. Ciao. Peace.